Hello everybody. Our next camera is the Olympus Stylus Epic Zoom 80. Also known as the Mew 2 Zoom 80. Uh, it was introduced in 1999. It came in black, silver, and this kind of goldish champagne color. Uh, there were a couple different models. Uh, there was one without the quartz date. And there was also one that came with the panorama, where it brings the bl blinds up and down and crops the picture. It has a 38 to 80 millimeter lens. Uh, it's power zoom. Um, it's f4.5 at 38 millimeters, and then f8.9 when you're zoomed all the way to 80. It's not a fast lens, but it is super sharp. It's five elements in four groups. This tele-wide rocker is a little bit weird. It's more like a joystick, but you get used to it pretty fast. Uh, it uses active infrared autofocus. Uh, it's good from 0 0.6 meters and about 2 feet to infinity. Uh, and a half press locks the exposure and the focus. There is an infinity mode, uh, which locks the focus at infinity and defeats the flash. So if you you know, see a bird and you're taking a picture of it through the glass or something, that way it doesn't fool the infrared autofocus. There's a green LED here um, that turns on solid when it has the focus, and it, it'll uh, blink at you if, if you're too close. Reads DX encoded film from ISO 50 to 3200 in full stops. Uh, if, it's, if you're at an intermediate speed, you know, ISO 64 or something like that, it'll set it to the next lower full stop. And if you use a non-DX encoded canister, or the canister is coded for less than ISO 50, it sets it to 100. It's auto load, um, auto advance, auto rewind. It does have a uh, mid-roll rewind capability, and the original strap has this little uh, pusher here made just for that little recess button on the bottom. There are seven shooting modes, they're really flash modes. The default when you power it on is auto flash. Um, it'll meter and decide if it needs to fire it or not. Uh, red eye reduction, it'll do the quick pre-flash to con contract the pupils. Uh, flash off, flash forced on, fill flash. The infinity mode that I mentioned and then night scene with flash, which is a slow shutter speed and the flash. And then that same mode, slow shutter speed, flash with red eye reduction. There's another mode, it's a little tricky to get to, because the uh, self timer button and the flash button, you press them at the same time, and you get backlight mode, which increases the exposure by one and a half stops. That's really the only exposure control you get with this guy. There's a self timer, it's the same button to select a, uh, if you have the remote. It was optional. I have one somewhere, but I didn't use it. Uh, it's good for 12 seconds. It'll do 10 seconds with this uh, LED on the front lit up, and then the last two seconds it'll flash. The orange LED back here, the upper one, that's for the flash. If it's blinking, the flash is still charging, and if you go ahead and take the shot, it might fire at a lower power, it might not fire at all. And when it's solid, you know that the, that the flash is fully charged. The manual doesn't give a guide number, but at ISO 100, uh, let's see, this guy is good for 0.6 meters to 4.4 meters when you're set to wide, 2 to a little over 14 feet, and when you're zoomed all the way, it's good for 0.6 meters to 2.2 meters. So two to a little over seven feet. Um, when you're in the uh, night scene flash mode, the slow shutter plus flash, the shutter will go all the way down to four seconds. If you have the flash turned off, I think in basically any other mode than that, uh, the manual says your max shutter speed is two seconds. This guy uses the I can get it open here. CR123, the three volt lithium batteries. They're not real common and not real cheap, 
but common enough. It's not bad, and they last a long time in these cameras. And like most in this series, the clamshell not only protects the lens, but it's the on-off switch. You need to make sure you don't block the flash as it's turning on. Uh, this guy can't pop up properly. It'll throw an error, but all you got to do then is just turn it back off and back on and make sure you're not blocking the flash and you're good to go again. I shot my test roll, some Ilford uh, FP4 Plus. It's unknown vintage or storage, but because this is just DX encoded, I shot it at box speed, uh, 125, which would get rolled back to ISO 100. It's only in full stops. The results are pretty good. I did get some of the weird lens flaring that shows up as these strange circles on some of your images. This camera's kind of infamous for that. It's not broken. This camera just did that. I got that on some of the images. But overall, I was really, really pleased with the images that I got. Not a great fast lens, but if you use ISO 400 film in this, you're going to be ready for anything. So it's a great little point and shoot, a handy zoom range. It's a lot of fun to use. So I will get on to the next camera. Hopefully it won't be quite as long in between. I say that all the time, but I'll try and really do it. And I will see you then.